Welcome back. The first full week of the high school baseball season is in the books, and we are starting to see some contenders emerge. A familiar name is on top in the East, while the West has two teams that are still undefeated and sprinting out the gates to start the year. So for the latest, we welcome in our own Jody Norset and Jody Minot and Century are really flexing their muscles to start the season. But what has been the key to their success early? I think Minot is such a complete team. They have good pitchers, and what makes them even better is that they're so fundamentally sound defensively. The Magician pitchers are going to throw a lot of strikes and make you beat them with your bats. And so far, teams haven't been able to do that. Now, I will say offensively, this lineup is really talented too. Carson Tanini has a number of multi-hit games already. Lofton Clabundi is off to a great start at the plate. They can win in multiple ways. They've won some close games against Jamestown, and then they blew out Watford City, scoring 37 runs in a doubleheader. Minot is looking very good. For Century, as expected, the pitching is really leading the way for the Patriots. Cade Feeney, Jacob Olson, and the rest of that staff are doing a nice job. They just held rival Bismarck to one run total in last night's doubleheader, a pair of Century victories. They're holding opponents to an average of 1.4 runs per game. That is number one in the state. The Patriots are looking really strong to start the year. Circle Tuesday on the calendar, though, Kelly. That's when Century and Minot square off for the first time this season. Noted. All right, <laughs> I am looking forward to it. But how about the East? We had some good matchups last night. We did. Let's take a look at some of them. Davies has had only one game under its belt, a 2-1 loss to South. The Eagles still hanging at number five in my power rankings. North sitting in fourth. That was the opponent. There weren't a lot of runs scored, but the first one came early. Taylor Parrott on third comes across to score on the RBI single by Jackson Roper, and Davies ends the first inning up 1-0. On to the third we go. Davies threatening again when Carson Siegel Shows off the arm in left field. Check out this throw. Right on the money to Chandler Ibox. Slaps the tag. It's still 1-0. Nothing better than a few web gems. Here's another. The Eagles show off some leather. It's Sam Moser making the diving play and the throw to keep the Spartans scoreless. Davies holds on for the 3-0 win, a game in which they played really sharp. That's a good first win we needed after losing the first uh, conference game. So it was a good booster and good defense to help. No errors, so that was nice. It's starting to warm up after a couple at-bats, so it's all get, It's just going to get better from here, and we're just going to do better and better each game. I think we can still get better approaches at the bat, at the at the plate. Be key, and we can sh still sharpen our defense up, I think. Still plenty to work on. North ends up winning the non-conference game number two, 10-4. That's the second straight series that they've done that, but it's been a challenging start to the season for the Spartans, who've now faced West Fargo and Davies, two teams that I think will still be playing in the first days of June. Speaking of the defending state champs from West Fargo, let's hop over to Veterans Field. West Fargo hosting Red River last night, and unlike the previous game we showed, the scoring came quick and often, unfortunately for Red River, it was mostly by the way of errors. The throw to second, ricochets away, and Braden Jacobson comes across to score the first of the night for the pack. Home team up 3-0 going into the second. Red River trying to battle back, scores on a fielder's choice. Kobe Tweeten slides home, but this one is just too much Packers. Runner on second for Andy Gravdahl, and he'll drive in Quentin Bonish. The Packers take a 6-1 lead into the third. Gravdahl ends up going two for three with a double and three RBI. Tristan Rorick and Braden Jacobson combined to toss a no-hitter for West Fargo in this one. The Packers make quick work of the Riders with a 12-1 victory in five innings. So West Fargo is the only 2-0 team in the EDC. Central Shanley and Cheyenne all have 1-0 marks in conference play. All three in action tonight. A couple of other notes from last night, Kelly, in Class B baseball. My number two team, Thompson, looks like the real deal. The Tommies beat Hillsborough Central Valley 9-zip. Top-ranked Park River Fordville Lankin is 6-0 and will play a really good Langdon Edmore Munich team tomorrow. Out west in a top five tilt, undefeated Bishop Ryan swept a twin bill with Shiloh Christian by identical 4-1 scores. Both those teams were unbeaten before last night. One last thing in Class B softball, Central Cass did it again. They beat defending state champ Kendra Richland for a second time. 7-5 in 10 innings. Josie Burr had the two-run double in the 10th to win it. There's no doubt right now the Squirrels are the team to beat in Class B softball. They have solid pitching and a lot of depth in that lineup. Kelly, back to you.
All right, thanks so much, Jody. The season might be cut short, but it seems like it's off to an exciting start. We love that. All right, when we come back, our final four breakdowns of NSIC spring football, starting with Wayne State and Winona State. Stay right here.